Hi, welcome back. Uh, in this uh, short mini uh, lecture, we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, uh, how to use commas. Indeed, the uh, comma is one of the most important tools of punctuation. If it's used correctly, it can clarify an otherwise confusing piece of writing. The comma splits the segments of a sentence into useful, understandable information. It makes sense of a, co of a complex sentence, and it provides redirection in a single thought. A little bit about comma use. Uh, use commas to separate independent clauses that are separated with words like and, but, for, or, nor, so, and yet. So here's some examples. Uh, the operation was over, comma, but the surgeon refused to leave. Or the student explained her question, comma, yet the professor still didn't seem to understand. And lastly, yesterday was her brother's birthday, comma, so she took him to dinner. So I think you see the point there. It's important to use commas after introductory clauses, phrases, or words that come before the main clause. Common words for introductory clauses that should be followed by a comma are words like after, although, as, because, if, since, when, and while. A couple of examples, um, while I was eating, comma, the cat scr uh, scratched at the door. Or, because her alarm clock was broken, comma, she was late for work. And lastly, if you are ill, comma, you should see a physician. As with most rules, there are exceptions. Don't put a comma after a main clause when a dependent or subordinate clause follows it, except for extreme contrast. An example would be, uh, she was still quite upset, although, comma, although she had won the Oscar. There are common introductory phrases that do require a comma. Uh, participial and infinitive phrases, absolute phrases, non-essential a positive phase, phrases, and long prepositional phrases over four words. An example would be, having finished the surgery, comma, he left the room. Or to get a seat, comma, you'd better come early. Or after the test, but before lunch, comma, I went jogging. Um, there are some common words that should be followed by commas. For instance, well, yes, however. Some examples would be, well, comma, perhaps he is an idiot. Or, yes, comma, the plane should arrive in an hour. Or, however, comma, you may not be satisfied with the results. Now, non-essential elements uh, in a sentence should be set off by a comma. But how do we tell? Well, if you leave out the phrase, the clause, or the word, does the sentence still make sense? Does the clause, phrase, or word interrupt the flow of words in the original sentence? If you move the element to a different position in the sentence, does the sentence still make sense? If the answer is yes to one or more of these questions, then the element in question is not essential and should be set off by a comma. Now here's some examples of sentences with non-essential elements. Uh, here's a clause. Uh, next Tuesday, comma, which happens to be my birthday, comma, is the only day I can meet. A phrase, the restaurant has an exciting atmosphere, comma, the food, comma, on the other hand, comma, is rather bland. Or a word, I appreciate your hard work, comma, in this case, comma, however, comma, you seem to have overexerted yourself. A little bit about essential elements. Uh, do not use commas to set off essential elements, such as clauses beginning with that, uh, a relative clause. Um, that clauses after nouns are always essential. That clauses following a verb expressing mental action are always essentials. Two quick examples of uh, that clauses after nouns. Uh, for instance, the book that I borrowed from you is excellent. Or the apples that fell out of the basket are bruised. You see there that uh, uh, commas are not necessary. And take a look at uh, that clauses following a verb expressing mental action. Uh, she believes that she will be able to earn an A. Um, he is dreaming that he can fly. Or, I contend that it was wrong to mislead her. And lastly, they wish that warm weather would finally arrive. So you get the point about why commas would not be appropriate uh, in these sentences. Okay, but now not to beat a dead horse, but a few more examples uh, of essential elements where commas are not needed. Uh, students who cheat only harm themselves, or the baby wearing the yellow hat is mine, or the candidate who had the least money lost the election. Um, 
uh, commas are not needed in those sentences. And back to non-essential elements where a comma is needed uh, uh, for a contrast. Uh, Fred, comma, who often cheats, comma, is only harming himself. Uh, my niece, comma, wearing a yellow jumpsuit, comma, is playing in the living room. And lastly, the Democratic Party candidate, comma, who had the least money, comma, lost the election. So I think you've seen the contrast between essential elements and non-essential elements and how uh, commas uh, uh, work. Okay, a little bit about the uh, three or more rule. Um, use commas to separate three or more words, phrases, or clauses written in a series. For instance, the Constitution establishes the legislative comma, executive comma, and judicial branches of government. Or the candidate promised to lower taxes, comma, protect the environment, comma, reduce crime, comma, and end unemployment. Uh, or the prosecutor argued that the defendant, comma, who was at the scene of the crime, comma, who had a strong motive, comma, and had access to the murder weapon, comma, was guilty of homicide. All right, a little bit about coordinate adjectives. Um, there are adjectives with equal or coordinate status in describing a noun. Uh, neither adjective is subordinate to the other. And you can determine if two adjectives in a row are coordinate by asking the following questions. Does a sentence make sense if the adjectives are written in reverse order? Or does the sentence make sense if the adjectives are written with and between them? If you answer yes to these questions, then the adjectives are coordinate and should be separated by a comma. For example, he was a difficult, comma, stubborn child. So there's a coordinate. They lived in a white frame house, non-coordinate. Uh, she often wore a gray wool shawl, non-coordinate. So I think you get the point there. A little bit about contrast. Use a comma near the end of a sentence to separate contrasted coordinate elements or to indicate a distinct pause or shift. Here's some examples. He was merely ignorant, comma, not stupid. Uh, the chimpanzee seemed reflective, comma, almost human. You're one of the center's closest friends, comma, aren't you? Or the speaker seemed innocent, even gullible. Okay, let's talk about free modifiers. Use commas to set off phrases at the end of the sentence that refer back to the beginning or middle of a sentence. Such phrases are free modifiers that uh, can be placed anywhere in a sentence without causing confusion. If placement of the modifier causes confusion, then it's not free and must remain bound to the word it modifies. So here's some examples. Nancy waved enthusiastically at the docking ship, comma, laughing joyously. That's correct. Lisa waved at Nancy, comma, laughing joyously. Well, that's not correct. Uh, who's laughing? Or laughing joyously, comma, Lisa waved at Nancy. And that's correct. So if you follow this, these rules, you'll uh, not have a problem in knowing where the modifiers are. Now, what about geographical names? Uh, use commas to set off all geographical names, um, items in dates except month and day, addresses except, except street number and name, and the titles and names. For instance, uh, Birmingham, comma, Alabama, comma, gets its name from Birmingham, comma, England. Or July 22nd, comma, 1959, comma, was a momentous day. Or who lives at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, comma, Washington, uh, comma, D.C. Or lastly, uh, Rachel B. Lake, comma, M.D., comma, will be the principal speaker. And be on the lookout for comma abuse. Uh, commas in the wrong places can break a sentence into illogical segments or confuse the reader with unnecessary and unexpected um, pauses. Uh, so don't use a comma to separate the subject from the verb. Um, an 18-year-old in California comma is now considered an adult. Well, that's incorrect. The most important attribute of a ball player, comma, is quick reflex actions, and that is correct. Okay, now hang in there, we're almost done with this mini lecture. Um, don't put a comma between two verbs or verb phrases in a compound predicate. Here's an example. We laid out our notes and snacks, comma, and began to study. That's incorrect. And don't put a comma between the two nouns or noun phrases or noun clauses in a compound subject or a compound object. 
examples, the music teacher from your high school, comma, and the football coach from mine are married. So that's an incorrect compound subject. Jeff told me that the job was still available, comma, and that the manager wanted to interview me. Also an incorrect object. And lastly, don't put commas after the main clause when a dependent or subordinate clause follows it, except in extreme contrast. For instance, she was late for class, comma, because her alarm clock was broken. That's incorrect. She was still quite upset, comma, although she had just won the Oscar. That's correct, extreme contrast. I think we talked about that earlier. Okay, well, thanks for listening uh, to this uh, section on uh, commas. And uh, again, something that uh, you've heard uh, ever since grammar school days. Uh, but it never hurts to have another conversation about it. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you down the road.